Hello, I'm Linda Ann at Studio ABC. I'm a design team member for Paul for Paul USA. It's an amazing product that you can use to make three-dimensional art. I've been so busy opening my physical studio in my hometown that I feel like I've neglected my online studio on Facebook. And so I have put out a challenge each month about artist birthdays and I decided to combine the artist birthday with my Paul for Paul so that I could do both and uh, Georgia O'Keeffe was the artist birthday for the month and so she did lots of gigantic flowers and I want you to see how I used Paul for Paul to meet this challenge. I just had to paint my new studio so I'm going to be using this old paint bucket uh, empty paint bucket as a form to make a bowl. Some of the preparations I make before starting a Paul for Paul uh, project is to wear rubber gloves. Uh, I take off all my jewelry and I wear old clothing or something over my clothing so that if I would happen to drop some on there I don't have to immediately run and wash it because it is a fabric stiffener. I'm going to put plastic over this bucket. I think it's already plastic and it would probably be fine to use but I'm not sure about that so I'm going to put this plastic bag over it so that it, the Paul Paul uh, soaked uh, fabric does not stick to the bucket. I want to take it off. I don't want to leave the bucket inside because that's where I plan to do the most beautiful part of the work. I poured some of the light skin tone Paul Paul into this plastic bowl so that I can uh, use it to soak my fabric in. I'll have plenty of working time so I can go ahead and let that sit out and get just a little bit tacky uh, while I'm working on getting the fabric to fit over the uh, the armature that I've made here, the form that I've made. Now I just have some old sheets and I mean they are really old torn up sheets. These came from my aunt's house many years ago and I've kind of had them in storage so I know that they're actually they're way too easy to tear but putting the pauper pole on them should stiffen it up and make it very sturdy so these won't go to waste. I want this bowl to turn out somewhat organic so I'm not cutting a perfect circle here but I'm just going to trim off some of the edges to get the right size so I put it over the bucket and kind of eyeballed it to see what size I want now I'll take this away and have a little cutting table here. That's some dry paint there from a previous project that I did, but it's not going to get on this, no problem. And if I wanted to, I could always add some pigment to the wet pauper pole and change the color of that. I'm just going to fold this. I already kind of measured on the bucket. I'm, I'm just folding it up and I'll kind of chop off the corners and end up with a somewhat circular uh, piece of fabric. I'm learning through experimentation uh, with Pauper Paul. haven't had any kind of training on how to use it. So each uh, new project is a new learning experience. And one of the things that I have learned the hard way is not to use your good scissors on the wet pauper pole. I thought I could just wash them off, but it's really difficult to wash that off of metal. So I try to do all of my cutting before I actually start dipping anything into the pauper pole. Now this isn't quite as round as I wanted it, so I'll probably do a little more trimming here. I don't mind if I do want it organic, but um, I want to trim it off a bit. I am really enjoying working with Paul for Paul. However, I will say that it's more of a challenge to work with Paul for Paul because of the uh, to, in order to make a video because of the drying time. I'm kind of used to sitting down painting something all in one sitting or maybe two sittings, but you have to work in the factor of the drying time uh, on this. And Paul for Paul 
when it first begins to dry, it's kind of a leather-like stage. It doesn't get rock hard immediately. But after a few days, even sometimes, depending on how much pulver pole you put on something, uh, it can take, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, and it will get very, very hard. Now, you see how I've draped this over my bucket, and I want to kind of know where to put it whenever I decide to uh, dip it in the pulver pole and then, then put it back in the right place. So I went and got a marker and I'm just going to mark on it about where I want it. Now when the wet pulver pole hits that, that marker's not permanent and it'll probably dissolve somewhat, but I think I'll be able to see it. So you just immerse it into the pulver pole. The reason I'm using a different bowl instead of immersing it into the bucket of pulver pole is I don't want to contaminate that pulver pole with little bits of fiber. I might want to use it for something else. So I always pour it, and unless I'm at the bottom of the bucket, I pour it into another container before I begin. And you see here when I pull it up, sometimes there's some little white spots on it so I know it's not fully saturated. And you just rub them together or uh, spoon some more on it. And then it's, it's pretty dripping wet, so I kind of squeeze it out. Look in there. Got all that dripping down. Squeeze it out and open it up and see if I've got some on both sides. I don't like to make sure that it's fully saturated before I do anything with it. And now I'll look for my little red line. And it's still there. Enough of it so that I can kind of know where to start. So, the only trick to this is going to be pulling it into place. It's going to be a very, very simple project. I'm just going to pull it back into place uh, where I want the folds to be and kind of loosen it up and pull it out loose. And for those of you that don't know, uh, I injured my knee three years ago, but don't be alarmed about the wheelchair that I'm sitting in. I think you might be able to see that from this picture. It's uh, not a permanent thing. It's my art chair. Found it at an auction for $10, and it certainly has been helpful on the in prepping uh, art materials when I have to run back and forth between classrooms because, as I said, I did injure my knee three years ago, but that doesn't keep me from walking. I'm not permanently in this thing, fortunately. And when Seneca brought it in to me, I thought he had lost his mind, but it sure has come in handy, especially in this very long store when you have to go back and forth a dozen times to do something. I hope you'll get the idea from this that pulver paw can be a very simple thing to work with. Uh, I have done some very elaborate projects where I've made little statues of Native American women, but it doesn't have to be that hard. Uh, those aren't particularly hard if you go step by step through what I was teaching you to do, but this is just pulling and draping and unfolding the pulver paw. I do have it on parchment paper, and I'm prepping it early because I kind of think that I may want to paint this. And I just keep turning it and looking at it. One of the key things about pulver paw when you're working on it is have it on a lazy susan or a piece of paper or some kind of light plastic or something so that you can turn it turn the whole thing without damaging it uh, because that um, you'll want to see all the way around it turning it has become a very important part of making this something else that i kind of learned on my own Well, I'd like to give this a little more drying time, but I realize I'm going to be gone tomorrow, most of the day, so I'm going to go ahead and try to work with it tonight and see what I can do. The bucket's under it. Okay. So I removed the bucket, and it's time to remove the plastic. Wow, I'm glad I put this uh, plastic around the bucket because I think I'd be having trouble removing the bucket. Um, 
it's really stuck to the bottom. Probably it overlapped. Some of the folds overlapped over the plastic and kept it in there. But I've just about got it out. And that's a nice little flower shape. I like this little flower shaped bow. Definitely a tribute to Georgia O'Keeffe. We'll see what we can do with it now. You know, it's really pretty, just like it is, but I want to put some colors in it because there were some places that I thought that paint wouldn't come off of the, the bag. Well, it did. It came off the bag and off the paper. I've got a little blue spot, some little green spots, and here's some more plastic stuck in the bottom. So, I'm going to do some really super bright painting on this. So, I think the best way to get that bright color that I want is to use the Vivids from Color Art because they're really super ultra, they call them ultra metallics and they are ultra metallics. So I'm just going to squirt some in and start painting. I want to have just a starburst of color so I'm going to add some up and down the sides like the petals um, have a lot of color to them. Really like the shape of this. It did turn out very organic, just like I wanted. Now I'm just taking a paintbrush and spreading out what I squirted on to the uh, the bowl into the petal areas. I just want to work that out and I'm going to put some other colors right on top of it when I get finished. This is looking pretty neat. Um, I like the way it's bringing out the, the crevices and the, the uh, relief areas in this flower. That was pink azalea. Let's use some snapdragon on it now. I'm not liking this too much at this stage. However, I do know that whenever I just keep adding layer upon layer, that I'm going to give that really super bright sparkle. So when you get to a stage that you don't like, just keep working. Let's add some ginger peach. Now, ginger peach is an orangish color, very, very uh, metallic. And I had the Snapdragon on there, and it's still a little uh, bit wet. But, and when those are, those are straight across from each other on the, the color wheel, violet and orange are straight across from each other. So when I start working with this, I'm very aware that I'm probably going to go into a brownish color. And you may see that happen. Yes, here it goes. Going into a brownish instead of that uh, bright, bright uh, ginger peach color. But... If you want colors to look really bright, put some dull colors beside it, and that really makes them sparkle. So this is a deliberate attempt. And I just keep going randomly. Kind of looks like a little sunburst now. This dries really fast, this paint does, and I'm going to give it a little time to dry while I work on the edges with some more of the pink azalea. And I, you need to work with it pretty fast. Uh, I just want some softness of this color around the very edges of the flower. And if I don't do this fast after I've put dots on it, then I'll end up with just dots. So I'm working super fast. Just about as fast as I can work my paintbrush. And this is looking exactly like what I wanted. It's soft and I let the pink, instead of using it uh, a whole lot of it, I spread it out with the paintbrush. Let the pink be soft on the edges of the flower. I called it a bowl, I called it a flower, but uh, maybe it's a flower bowl. <laughs> Picking up a little of that um, ginger peach and pulling it to some of the edges. I went to the Neatest Native event 
uh, Native American event tonight at the school, and I didn't change my clothes when I got back. So I went to change into something a little more appropriate to paint in because I, was, I did see that I got a little dot of paint on my sweater. And this old shirt has seen a lot of painting time, and I just wipe my brush right off on my shirt a lot of times. So it's no big deal on this. I am not a neat painter. So let's add some blue bayou to this. Give it a little different sparkle here and there. I do shake my vivids uh, before I use them because they, the mica in them settles. Anytime you've got a paint with mica in it, it tends to settle. It's just like frosted nail polish, how, you, how that settles, same thing. And it never hurts to have a little more ginger peach. This time we're going to let it look a little more of its own color instead of mixing with the violet. Keep its own characteristics. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Wow. Let's work with this solar gold. Um, I have the one ounce size in it. I sure wish I'd ordered a larger size because it's disappearing fast. It's really a beautiful gold. You know, this is a uh, tribute to Georgia O'Keeffe, but it also reminds me of Dale Chihuly, his bright, bright colors uh, at Bellagio's in Las Vegas on the chandelier. He's a glass artist if you're not familiar with him. I'm using now solar gold and I'm just going to spot it around and let it stay and then I'm going to use it all around the edges where I put that soft pink. But just let this sparkle. Solar gold is such a pretty gold. I've decided I'm not going to do anything around the outside of the bowl. I'm just going to leave this. I could really see this on the wall or as a lampshade. I can see it as a lot of different things. I think as a lampshade, uh, even though I put the color on the inside and I only used one layer of fabric, I think it would shine through and be really interesting. Okay, so I'm putting the solar gold around the edges, working really fast because again it dries fast and I want to spread it out. Of course, I'm not going to spread out what I put down inside the bowl, just what's on the edges. I'm going to have to order some more of this. I'm enjoying this um, peach or actually it's skin colored pauper paw against the colors of the Vivid Ultra Metallics. The soft edges are a nice contrast to that super bright center that I did. A little more gold. And spread it out. I would never get tired of this color. So pretty. Well, let me give you a little warning about trying to paint before you actually cure this out. Uh, the center of this is collapsing on me because I have so much wet paint on it and it re kind of reactivated the pauper pole is what I think actually happened. But I'm going to finish painting it and then I'll drape it when it's when the paint's dry. I'll drape it back over the bucket and let it dry upside down. And I think that's going to take care of it because I just didn't give my pauper paw enough time to cure out. And I believe that, see how it's pushing up there and kind of collapsing? I can push it down. I, I believe that since I didn't paint the other side, that there'll be an area for all the moisture to escape from the pauper paw. Isn't this pretty? I love it. It's 
it's different. Happy birthday, Georgia O'Keeffe. I would love it if you subscribed to my channel, shared this uh, on your social media, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, and send me a comment. Thank you so much for watching.